I was born into a silent world, where the only things I knew were my family's faces, lip patterns, and visual gestures. With the gift of hearing aid technology, I was able to speak from the age of six. Now, I was so used to adult company, speech therapists, audiologists, and the ever consistent support of my parents. Alongside support in the early days came some new hearing aid advancements, digital hearing aids. So at the age of nine, with these new digital hearing aids, there were a lot of new firsts, new experiences. The first day I heard birds sing, leaves crunching, sound of a zip being fastened in the rustling of my autumn jacket. All these new experiences at the age of nine were so fascinating, my confidence grew. I was always brought up to communicate my needs, to socialise with all, and to never shy away from any opportunity. My childhood was amazing. Now, at the age of 12 came some more hospital visits. And to be quite frank, this was really normal for me, because I was so used to one-on-one -on -one appointments with doctors, consultants, audiologists, speech therapists, and now eye specialists. What I didn't realise was that my initial eye appointments actually meant I was going blind and that I'd be registered deafblind at the age of 12. The day this hit me was one day I was sat in my mum's car in the front seat and mum was driving and she said to me, can you see me? I whacked my head round to look at her and I said, of course I can see you. I remember thinking, what a weird, stupid, random question. And then she said, no, when you look ahead, what can you see of me? So I looked ahead, and I described what I could see. I said, well, I can see your hands. I was 14 at the time, and I remember thinking, something is not quite right. Because I looked round to find my mum's face, and it was hidden. But from what I could see, her face had gone red, and her eyes were wet. What I later discovered was my parents found out I had Usher syndrome. Usher syndrome is the most common form of congenital deaf blindness, a combination of deafness with the onset of retinitis pigmentosa, a progressive blindness that robs of peripheral vision. The word blind haunted me for a while then, especially after that tense car journey with mum, and as a deaf child too, Going blind was my worst nightmare. At 14, 15, those teenage years were a blur. I recall my education suffered and my parents were frantically worried for my support at school. It was just not working. Now at senior school, I had a teacher of the deaf and a teacher of the visually impaired. Neither one of them had ever worked with someone with Usher syndrome. Now, being deaf-blind is not deaf and blind. It is a whole new disability. And it requires proper understanding of. For I was struggling to understand it myself. And there was virtually no support of this except for at home. And that is when, as a family, we decided that I'd be moved to a boarding school for the deaf, where the support that we wanted was promised. And I actually remember thinking, I'm going to be just like everybody else. I could not have been more wrong. I was bullied by both staff and students, and I was made to feel a burden because I was not just deaf, I was blind too. Many struggled to accept this, and in the emotional torment I was in, I struggled too. Now, as a family, we didn't know who to talk to. With such big charities who supported many, but not people like me. Usher syndrome was a condition that was virtually ignored. And that is when, in 2011, we set up the Mollywatt Trust. We, want, we didn't want other families to feel the same as we did. Lost, helpless, misunderstood. We wanted to create a support system for those living with Usher syndrome. And so we began devoting our time to raising awareness of Usher syndrome. But not what we can't do, what we can do with the right support and tools. An example of this 
is due to research, we found many people with Usher syndrome hadn't been able to access text for a while. So we began funding Kindles. With every Kindle we funded, we asked everybody to blog about their experiences. There is one blog that always sticks with me. This young, single mum with Usher syndrome with her new Kindle, with the ability to change contrast and text size, for the very first time, she could read her children a bedtime story. This humbles me to this day. Such little things like this make such a huge difference to people like me. Now, I feel my story needs to be told because I am not unique. I'm a patient, not a condition, and I know myself better than anybody. I need to be listened to by you because my story is an education I'd like to share with you. I would like people like myself with life-changing conditions to be a part of your ethos in treating patients. I would like NHS professionals to consider how technology has changed, not just in my lifetime, but in theirs since qualifying an impact made to enablement, to ability, to communication. Do not consider me as that poor deaf blind girl, unable to speak, unable to hear, if at all, and totally blind. Do not consider speaking or acting on my behalf. Speak to me, I am a person, a capable person, a valuable member of society. I have not had choice regarding technology, but simply to embrace it or to face the exclusion many have had to over the years. Thank you.